Sathopoulos and Josh Vegan come together in an incredible podcast, Grow, Scale, Master, an energetic approach to drive progress, master skills, build strengths, and put the strategy back into rapid business and personal success. Backed by real-world experience in rapid scale, to playing the long-term game of business, it's the story of all the lessons learned on the journey to mastery. Be inspired, renew your energy, and chase the future with Grow, Scale, Master. Productivity is absolutely everything. And, you know, Con, I was um, over in America and I was doing some work in uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And, and one of the guys said to me, he goes, you know, Josh, your business model is the He-Man model. And I'm like, what's the He-Man model? He goes, like, literally, you're the only one in the business and you're playing superhero every day. Yeah. He said that, literally, there's only so far that you can skin the young in before you're literally going to get to the edges of productivity and it can no longer push you further anymore. And, you know, the interesting thing was, um, I, I spoke to him recently and he's like, man, you know what I love? I'm like, what's that? He goes, literally, we're 10 years deep and you're still pushing the productivity <laughs> barrow. And so this is going to be a really important conversation because, you know, how do we go to thrive inside of that, that digital world? Con, I'm going to go through a couple of the basics that I think have really allowed um, a lot of productivity and performance. And I just say that, you know, the most important conversation, no notifications. So I want you to go in your phone, turn off all notifications. The only area that you're allowed to have notifications on are for SMS, for your calendar, and also two for maps. And that, that makes sense, you know, so you're driving to a phone and yep. you get the right turn. Yep. The next conversation is a scheduled timeout. Um, I saw Mark Benioff, uh, CEO of Salesforce, come out. He said, you know what? Um, you need to make sure that a minimum of 60% of your calendar is unscheduled. Uh, and I'm like scheduled within a minute of my life. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to be a participant on this uh, episode because mine's exactly the same. And so what he said to me is, is that literally you've got to now schedule unscheduled time. Right. So on Saturday mornings between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., I'm loose with my time. Well, so you've got, you've got scheduled unscheduled, <laughs> unscheduled time. Does it say unscheduled time in your calendar? Your calendar. Yeah. No way. And the benefit of that is that like literally I've got some free time and some flex. Yeah. And I think that this is the other conversations that literally you've got to really understand that. So scheduled time out is a really important part. And one of the things I learned very, very early on is, is that you need to make sure that you've got all of your holidays in your calendar 12 months in advance. Right. So I've already got the dates for my holidays all the way out through to the end of 2025. Is that because you've got something to look forward to, Josh? It's also too because I'm learning the rhythms of my year. Okay. So I used to, when I first started the training business, ring people on the 23rd of December and I didn't understand why they didn't want coaching just yeah. before Christmas. Yeah. Exactly. And so now I'm like, okay, great. So we finish circa the 5th or 6th of December and we come back maybe the 6th or 7th of, of January. Yeah. We could never ever sell a training date before Australia Day. Now our most in-demand dates are actually the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th of Jan. Right, for kickstarts people and whatnot. Want, oh, people want to get back into business. Yeah. And so then the next conversation is that literally where are the public holidays? Where is the time where it's going to be weird? April is a weird month as an example with Easter, Good Friday, Easter Monday, Greek Easter, School Josh's holidays. birthday, yeah. you know, all of those yeah. things. And then you then move on from that. You go, okay, great. So some time off in June, July. And then the next thing for me is that then my next big break is actually the first week of November. Right. And taking oh, a couple yeah. of days Melbourne in around Cup. Melbourne Cup is an incredible time to do it because you can go on the Monday, Tuesday, no one notices. Wednesday can be gone. Thursday can be gone. Back in the business Friday. You can take nearly four or five days, which is good enough time to jump up to Brisbane or go and do something yeah. else, right? And then you get super refreshed because then when you come back, everything's about listing for next year and trailing up the balance of your existing campaigns. So holiday time is about getting strategic. And this is the interesting thing is that most people book the holidays because I'm tired now as opposed to actually learning the rhythms of a year of where do the big waves happen yep, and then literally when does it land. Love that. And so that then that way you've actually got some clarity about what it is that you're doing. So Love you're not that. away during the middle of peak time. Um, what I then get you to think about is the power of calendar. So if it doesn't go in the calendar, it doesn't happen at all. Now, this is a really important thing to think about your planned time and like literally how many times do you and I go and set a time and then like literally a minute later, either one of us has actually sent the calendar invite. Uh, within literally 30 seconds because we live by our calendars. <laughs> and so, so calendars are a really important part. Absolutely. So if you've got your child's year six graduation, that should be in the calendar. Absolutely. And like so literally when you think about that, health first, yep. family second, work third yep. in the calendar that way. Yeah. So that way if, you know, picking up your kids from school is a really important stage of your life, do that but do it really well. Yeah, mate. My mum and dad picked me up from school every day from when, like, literally, I was in senior school, and it was the best time that I ever had in terms of catching up with parents and being a part of that and doing those things. But I didn't think that they were making sacrifices. I now realise that they were, but it was actually a major part of what they actually did inside of it. So your calendar's got to reflect your values. Got it. And then, literally, I think that then that whole idea about work out what's important to you. So you are going to have a ton of opportunities that are going to come your way. And yep. that old school saying is that the better that you get, the more people are going to want to use you. So now you actually have to learn about how you actually say no to things that are no longer the opportunity. 
And so this is about actually having an opportunity metrics. So if you said to me, okay, great, what's important to you? And you go, you know what, Josh, I want to earn an extra million dollars in fees. I want more time with my family. I want to make sure that it makes the business more fun. And I want to make sure that it actually provides me more energy. By doing that thing, does it help you to achieve any of those four things? And if it doesn't, then literally the answer is no. I love that. It's almost like... Um you know how we business plan, right? So we, we, we plan for the year ahead calendar or financial year. This is almost essentially a life plan around mm. where our energy and time goes because generally speaking, that's where your focus goes, right? Mm-hmm. So I love the idea of being able to schedule unscheduled time. So mm-hmm. for example, my Sundays, bar today because we had a couple of auctions, mm. my Sundays are generally free days, right? They're family mm. days, they're at home, they're very relaxed, there's stuff around the house that I need to do. Mm. It's almost, a, it's quite quite cathartic to go and, you know, cut the lawn or, mm. you know, do all the little jobs that you've got to do. But I, I love the idea of being able to book your holidays one year in advance. I think it gives you, A, something to look forward to, mm. but B, you're right, you actually don't want to take off the break in September, October mm-hmm. when it's peak spring selling season time or, mm-hmm. you know what, I'm just going to come back in February and I've missed out the start of the year, which we now know is one of the most critical parts of the year, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a that's a piece of gold. That's awesome. You know, the other key conversation in terms of being really productive is like, what are the tools that you're actually going to use. So I actually have, um, we happen to use a task management system and in our business, we use a thing called Asana. And so the basic idea is that literally on a Saturday morning, I have a series of things that I have to do every Saturday morning as a part of that routine. By the time I get to Saturday, I'm cooked, you know, it's been a big week. Yeah. Put the headphones on, put on some really good music and then literally I just follow what actually Asana says to do. So yeah. clean email inbox, okay, great. Next conversation, write the edit. Next conversation, get the weekend written for next Perfect. week. And then literally I get all of that done and my social tile's done once a month and then everything's actually done, I'm, I'm complete and I'm out of there. And so then that whole conversation is like, like that ability to have switch out time is awesome because you know what it is that you've actually got to do. Yeah. Now what I, what I um, am seeing a lot of is that there's not enough people who actually really understand the power of a review mechanism Mm. So if you stop for just a couple of minutes and you go, okay, great. What's ahead this week? What's ahead this month? What's ahead this quarter? And what do I need to get ready well before it needs to get ready? And then how am I working backwards to make that stuff happen so that no surprises come? And this is a really important conversation because of contextual awareness, right? So right. when we head into things like Blueprint, like literally, believe it or not, we record the first audio of that at the start of May. Wow. And it feels so early. But it's May and June and July and first week of August we're live. Yep. So by the time you get it to producers and you bring it back and it goes in the digital app and you write the copy and blah, 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 blah. So like literally it's actually about having a really good quality plan. So what I'm going to say is that literally that ability to just not have to think and just do these things on that day is a really nice way to actually get it out of your head and into a productive zone. Yeah, I love that. One of the earliest things that literally I found was the ability to go and set a timer. So there's a study done on on two kids and they go to the first child, oh, you know, um, we need you to go and clean your room. And this kid like this, oh, I don't want to clean my room. You know, that goes on for hours. Then they go to the next kid. It's like, how quickly do you reckon you could clean your room? Go. And they press the stopwatch. And literally under a minute later, this kid comes up, room's clean. And it's like, like, like isn't that interesting? Yeah. Now, technically everything's of just underneath the do now. But the basic idea is this is that, you know what, this is that whole idea is that when you set a time limit and that's all I've got, then you have this extreme ability to focus. Yep. Now, focus is absolutely your superpower. So one of the things that I've worked out is, okay, great, set the timer for 45 minutes and for the next 45 minutes, that's all I do. Now, you're aware I've, I've got like some Normatec um, boots that I got to put on my legs after the running and stuff that I, I do for recovery. Yes. Guess how long they go for? 45, 45 minutes. minutes. Guess what? You can't get up while they're on. Ah. So for the next 45 minutes, I'm just clearing emails or the next 45 minutes, I'm writing proposals or the next 45 minutes, I'm doing whatever. Yep. And so then that, way, whether or not it's a call session, whether or not it's cleaning your house, whether or not it's getting an administration done, I'm going to chuck 45 minutes at this and go as fast as I can with the quality of the work on the way through. And then I have a break. Yep. And this is that a real ability that you've got to learn how to build that muscle to actually have focus. And what we're seeing a lot of is that um, there's an old school thing where they, you know, remember them, they used to tell you your brain is like an information super highway and you can multitask? Yes. Well, the reality of it was that literally what they worked out is the quality of the work substantially dropped. Yeah, of course. So you've got to stay focused and intent. And you can tell if someone's in a conversation, but they're not there. So if you want to think about productivity and performance, where do you capture things when they come at you? Um, I, for example, use two sentences.es as a methodology. None of my emails are longer than two emails when I send a reply. Yep. If it's longer than that, it's because it's a legal trail. 
but I'd rather actually pick up the phone and call someone. Yeah, go back to st- step so, one. Yeah. Mate, believe it or not, my email inbox does get to zero every Saturday morning. Yeah, wow. That, but I'm also ruthless on unsubscribing. Yes. And I'm ruthless about saying, hey, great, that's just not for me. Yeah. But literally someone else in my team can go to handle that yeah. function. But I think it's a really important part that you've got to start to realise that literally you are allowing all of these inputs. Um, the other day I went through all of my socials and I just unfollowed 500 people. Wow. And the interesting conversation, it's not because they're not great, it's all of the above, but you know what? Hey, I'm just not getting value in terms of what's happening in the relationship and I don't see it being reciprocated the other way. So look, I don't need to be a part of that. Yep. So it's, it's a really important conversation that to gain productivity, you learn that literally um, you, you, we use time based on the amount of time that we perceive that we have left. So, so that was from Adol Gwandi's book. And it, it's kind of interesting because if you think about it, touch wood, but you go to the doctor and they say, Con, you've got a year left in your life. Yeah. You're going to live the year very differently. Absolutely. But if I say to you, Con, you've got an hour max to get me another million dollars in revenue in the business. I bet you your recruitment phone, you'll be ringing a few people straight away. Yep, and totally so, agree. So that's about literally getting into being more competitive in how you use the time that you have available and learning what parents can teach us, particularly with new children, is that they learn the power to be able to do more in a very short period of time, but they're also to have the understanding that they're going to do very specific things. So this is about uh, allowing the data to connect um, with the reality of life and say, okay, great, how do I actually generate my leads? How do I win my listings? What do I do to actually make sure I sell them? So that literally there's no wasted energy and there's no wasted effort on the way through. Love that, Josh. That's that's probably, that's got to be one of your best. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Because <laughs> I've just taken a bunch of notes for me because particularly when, uh, when you speak about uh, the power of the calendar and the power of no and making sure that you've got the ability to be able to schedule that unscheduled time, I'm just sitting here going, oh, yeah, no, I don't do that. I don't do that. I will do that. I should do that. I could do that. But here's the key thing. Yeah, literally, in the course of the next 10 years, do you think that you're going to get, do you think that life is going to get faster or slower for you? Faster. Okay, great. Absolutely faster. And do you faster. think that literally the more, the better you're going to get, there's more people going to want to use you? Absolutely. So how are you planning on coping with that new level of demand? Yeah, I'm going to listen to this podcast over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> but, so you, no, but I get it. So you've got to find capacity. Yeah, 100%. Through systems. And- and, and your ability to be able to choose how you get your time spent. So, for example, for me, the thing I'm going to turn off when I get back out of this is no notifications. Mm. So, SMS, maps, and? And, come on, man. SMS, maps, and, come on, Josh. Okay, okay. SMS. Instagram, your Facebook. Maps and calendar. And calendar. <laughs> and calendar, <laughs> Don't sorry. Forget, you'd forget your own wedding. That's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Experiences that rapidly shaped you. You know, Con, this is interesting, the power of a pen and a notepad and like I'm mean going to say, if you ever happen to see me in a cafe or restaurant and if I ever happen to be on my own, I bet you that I'll have a device with me and most likely a pen and a, and a, and a pad. A pad, yeah. And the reason for that is that literally I'll be thinking, I'll be brain dumping, I'll be getting the brain really clear, but I find it really therapeutic to actually still write out those things and get it out of my head. And it's a way of switching zones or levels of, of horizons of focus. Yeah. So that naturally I can just go, okay, great. These are some things that are actually really important. Sometimes I might be planning a holiday. Sometimes I'm getting things out of my head that have been going on this week. Sometimes I'm doing a bit of a SWAT on my own personal life. What are my strengths at the moment? What are my weaknesses at the moment? Where are my opportunities? And what are the trends that I actually see that are continuing to go yeah. on? And so actually I'm doing that and I'm treating myself as a business and say, how do we make this enterprise really sing? Yeah, that's cool. I like that. And yes, I've seen you with your notepad and your pen everywhere as well. Um, one thing that's uh, rapidly shaping me, me is the power of no. Uh, for the last couple of months, I've been saying yes to too many things I should have said no to. And it's been given me the ability to reflect back on that time. And sure, I've had some great experiences, connected with a lot of people, been able to transfer knowledge and gain knowledge, but it's been at a cost. And that cost is the ability for me to be able to actually have that thinking, creative, really intense focus time. So for me... The power of no is my, uh, my, my, my next chapter. Something that's changing your view. You know, Con, I was um, thinking about it that like a lot of people, they are in this position and they say, you know, how do I, how do I determine about business success? And, oh, we've got this piece of software and it can do all of these things. And you hear people on stage say, you know, you're only using 10% of the software. Imagine if you used all 100% of it, how good your life would be. Mm. And I go the other way. I'm like, well, first let's define the experience that I want my customer to receive. And then I'm going to define what software stack I'm going to need to do that. And the interesting conversation is if I'm only using 10% of the software, but that's delivering the customer experience I want it to use. And that's all you need to that's use. That's all I need. That's a completely agree. And this is that whole idea is that literally um, it's harder to have simplification, but it's easier to scale once it's simple. Yeah. So like literally, would you like fries without a billion dollars? Yeah, exactly. So, so, so like literally, don't get too complicated about what it is that you're doing. Just stay really focused about these are the things that really matter to me. Keep it really simple. Well, the genius is in the simplicity. 